Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Bevan. And in this video, I'd like to share with you my journey of how I got into data science machine learning. Um, not only that, but I hope in the future to make more videos like this where I interview others that are in machine learning or data science, whether they are working in industry or um, like me, an academic lecturing at a university doing research. Okay, so hopefully this can encourage you. This can give you some direction, some pointers. I'm not sure, but I hope you enjoy it and you learn something from it. So I guess my journey really began... I mean, when I was an undergrad, I did a stats course. I, my, my background is mechanical engineering. And when I was an undergrad, we did a second year statistics course, which was actually quite useless. And I don't really remember much from that. So that was kind of the closest I've, I got really to machine learning um, in my mechanical engineering undergrad. So my background is mechanical engineering. I did a master's in mechanical engineering, um, working with composites. And so naturally I thought, okay, for my PhD, I would again just carry on and do uh, my PhD in composite materials, carbon fiber, carbon nanofibers, those kinds of things. And my supervisor was kind of directing me to not only do um, work that is with actual physical materials, but also to begin to work with optimization. How can we use mathematical optimization to optimize various material properties in the in the fibers themselves? And seeing as I the only kind of optimization I'd ever done was in undergrad in calculus courses where you are calculating the maximum and minimum in say single or multivariable calculus. That was the only bit of optimization I'd ever done. So what I thought was let me go and take an actual optimization postgraduate course here in South Africa. And I enrolled and it was really great. It was a excellent course in optimization and everything was being carried out in Python. And that is where I got introduced really to, to, um, to any kind of machine learning. It was, we focused mainly on linear regression. By the way, linear regression is the basics of machine learning. If perhaps you didn't realize that, uh, perhaps you've been working with linear regression but you've never really known that th th these really are the fundamentals. If you can understand this um, linear regression, then, then that opens up your mind to understand more, say, complicated models such as neural networks, etc. But that was the first time that I actually got introduced to it. We were um, using machine learning. We were using linear regression and I want to use the word nonlinear regression to fit linear and nonlinear data sets. Uh, I got introduced to cross validation to find um, parameters. Um, leave one out cross validation. I remember we used specifically to find a parameter. And so I got introduced to that. I got introduced to Python um, because really what does machine learning do? Machine learning uses optimization. So optimization is a key aspect of machine learning when you're trying to fit your models to the data. So that was the first um, time I was introduced to it. However, my, my PhD, which I started in the middle of 2014, eventually by 2016, I realized, and I'm not going to go into the details, but I realized this is not working out. Um, it just, it just wasn't happening at the moment for various reasons. Okay. So I actually then thought, that's it. I'm done. I'm done with anything data science, statistics, machine learning. It just wasn't for me. Um, and so I'm still thinking, okay, what should I do my PhD in? What is my field that I'm going to be interested in? What direction should I go? By the way, all the time that I'm doing this, I'm faithfully teaching my my course because I'm a lecturer at a university in South Africa. Uh, I teach first year engineering mechanics and physics major. Okay, so all the while I'm busy teaching this. I'm busy teaching this, but 
on top of this, I'm trying to figure out, okay, what is my research direction? What, what am I interested in? And I don't want to go through the whole story, but I went through so many different things uh, during this time. I even enrolled for the CFA, the Chartered Financial Analyst, because I really began to develop an interest in finance, in investing, that kind of stuff. And I actually did um, about five or six months of studying for the CFA level one exam. But I got to the point where it was consuming so much of my life and talking to various people in the industry, I realized my age and various factors. I'm just not going to be able to really go down that road uh, with you know, my, the age that I was at and, and, and various things. And so I stopped. I stopped the CFA. But the one thing about the CFA, which was interesting, is it introduced me to the, for the first time to probabilities in statistics. I'd never done that in my undergrad course. I'd never really touched on probabilities, but there's a section in the CFA, um, kind of a mathematical section on modeling and, and stuff like that. And I got introduced to probabilities. However, um, that didn't work out. And I just actually just continued um, just seeking what should I do while I'm still lecturing, while I'm still lecturing, what should I do? Um, eventually, I got to the point where I saw that, um, well, didn't see, but I, I, I just was in front of me all the time was that my lecturing job at the university was to work um, with interventions. So we provided extra support, support tutorials for students, extra lectures. We just provided interventions, meaning the students are attending their mainstream lectures. And then my unit at the university is to provide these support tutorials. So at that point, I had about eight years data on students that were receiving these interventions. And so it basically started to get me to think about how do I measure causal effects? How do I measure treatment effects? Uh, now, this is a whole nother video um, and it's a deep, deep topic, causal inference. But it slowly brought me to causal inference. For example, if you if you take a pill, if you take a you've got a headache and you take a pill and you right. Is the pull the reason? Is it the cause for taking your headache away? Or that policy that you, that you uh, administer, is that the real cause for the, the improving in health? Or is that tutorial that you administer every Tuesday afternoon, is that responsible for the improving of marks? So th these are the kinds of questions I started to ask. And I realized the way that I was going to do it was to use um, predictive modeling, use machine learning and data science. And so that was how I started to really get into machine learning again. I had all this data. And so I eventually enrolled again for my PhD with a completely new topic, a new field. I wasn't in composite materials anymore. I was now purely looking at using machine learning and causal inference to study the effectiveness of our interventions that we've been having over the past many years. Okay. And so started my new PhD and then I just dived in. I began to teach myself. I watched tons of YouTube videos and, but particularly in terms of books, there was uh, two books really that I would highly recommend. They're free for download on the internet. So I'm not selling it to you. You can go online and you can download it freely. I cannot believe that the authors allow this, but it's just their, their large heart to just want to get the, the knowledge out there. Anyway, the books are Introduction to Statistical Learning by essentially Hasty and Tip Sharani. These are the two professors at Stanford University. And, and actually the first book is called Elements of Statistical Learning, which is actually a very, it's much more of a higher grade, more difficult to understand, denser, uh, more difficult topics. It's called Elements of Statistical Learning. 
But the one that I would recommend first is called Introduction to Statistical Learning, which came out after Elements of Statistical Learning. So if I remember, I'll put the link or the, the, the names of those two textbooks in the description. But those are brilliant. They, they gave me a solid foundation, again, of linear regression, logistic regression, cross-validation, which is a huge, huge thing in machine learning. Um, cross-validation versus just simply training and testing, train-test-split, um, random forest, decision trees, boosting, bagging, all those really amazing topics. And it's written so well, it, it just describes the topic so well. So on top of that, tons of videos, tons of Wikipedia articles, tons of journal papers I read just to teach myself. And I would read things from various angles. I would, I would take a topic and then watch, say, five videos on that topic. I would read multiple journal papers. I would look at it in, in, in various articles just to try to develop a three-dimensional understanding of a topic, not just from one person's point of view. But anyway, those two uh, books were excellent. Uh, in terms of more advanced machine learning like neural networks, what I would recommend is, off the bat, is the Andrew Ng um, video, YouTube videos on neural networks. He starts off with, actually starts off with logistic regression, which is really a single neuron. If you think about it, it's a single neuron with inputs and outputs. It's got an activation function in there and it is, it's a non-linear model. And that really, if you can understand logistic regression, you can really understand neural networks. So he starts off with that, then he moves into fully connected, dense neural networks, describes all of the details there. Then he moves on to convolutional neural networks and to recurrent neural networks, as far as I know. Just absolutely brilliant. So if you want to learn that, that's my recommendation. Okay, so anyways, I learned all of that and I used it then for my for my PhD. So in, in one sense, I am completely self-taught, except for that first optimization course. Um, I am completely self-taught by all the videos and, and um, materials that you can just you can just get online for free we live in a really remarkable age where you can just get all of this information for free but you have to pay the price of spending week after week after week so if i i started my basically my second phd um not my second phd my first phd i quit so it's not my second phd but I started again roughly in January, February 2018, and I completed my PhD in, uh, I would say, two and a half years later. Now, that's a whole nother story. Uh, you could say, well, that's amazing, two and a half years, but it's not really that. It's a, it's a long story. I'm not going to get into that right now, but I finished in two and a half years, and the journey just continues. The journey just continues. My PhD was in combining machine learning and causal inference. To me, it's a very exciting field. I feel that the machine learning, the pure machine learning field is so um, saturated, if you will, with, with the, the absolute geniuses that I could never compete there. But I feel like I can, I can carve out my own little um, way in this field of machine learning and causal inference, combining those two topics together. And so this is where I'm going. Like I said, the learning never ends. Uh, I'm always being, ref I'm always refreshing my mind on various things. Um, and I'm always just learning more. I'm always just taking a further step. Okay. Um, so why did I start this channel? Why did I start this machine learning data science channel? Well, there are two main reasons that I can think of at the moment. Um, and the first is that it helps me in my learning. Uh, if you ever want to really understand something, then my suggestion to you is teach it. That is, if you want to understand a mathematical topic or something, teach it. When you teach it, that is when you really go deeply into the understanding. 
It's only when you start to output something out of your, from your brain through your either writing or speaking and, you know, do both. That is when you can see where the holes are in your understanding. That is where you can see where you understand things, where you don't understand them. So that is one of the main reasons, the first main reason. Um, so in, on my channel, it's only got 43 videos, I think. Um, I have been able, even though I only really started machine learning three years ago, right? 2019, 2021, well, almost four years ago, com almost completely self-taught. I was able to uh, present videos on supervised versus unsupervised learning. What is the, um, what is it, why do we need machine learning versus rule-based programming? Um, what is the difference between cross-validation and train-test split? Why is cross-validation, in my opinion, better? Why is when you're searching for your hyperparameters in, say, neural networks or random forest, why is random grid search often better than, say, an exhaustive grid search when you're searching for hyperparameters? I've, I've made videos um, on linear regression, maybe five or six videos, of maybe a, as best as I can, on logistic regression. Then I moved into... Uh, a few videos on neural networks, on forward and back propagation. I've also now presented some new videos on causal inference, on explainable AI, explainable machine learning. So the more that I present, the more I present, the more I understand. I have a deeper understanding. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second reason is so that I can just document my work so that I can refer to it later and it also becomes like a portfolio for me if I wanted to, say, um, get a lecturing position or something like that at another university. I could show them, look, I've got these 50 videos or, or whatever, 40 videos, 50 videos where I go, where I can show you. Not only do I have a PhD in applying machine learning to a specific field, but you can also see all my, my teaching. So it's also there just to just to show people kind of my portfolio, what I can do, and also to help you. I would say that's that's the number number three is 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 to help people in machine learning. So uh, I hope the channel is helping you. And there's not many. I don't have many subscribers. That's fine. It's more just a hobby for me. Um, to present what I can do and to, to help a few um, students out there. Uh, but if you ever feel you would like a specific topic, let me know. So I guess what are my takeaways? Uh, I just have two here. Sometimes it takes a while to find something that you like and that you can work in long term. So just keep chipping away at it. Maybe you're not quite happy at what you're doing. Keep something stable in your life. Keep that stable thing going while you are chipping away at um, trying to find something that you're really interested in doing. Okay. And the second thing is, the second important takeaway is you can teach yourself machine learning and data science. Definitely helps to take some courses. Absolutely. If you can take some, some courses on it, I highly, would highly recommend it. But actually, you, there's so many resources out there that you can actually teach yourself. So many videos, free textbooks, downloads. Um, by the way, there's also that um, deep learning textbook that you can freely download by, is it Ian Goodfellow? So everything's free. The only thing that is your time and energy that you have to pay for. So there we go. That's my quick story and um, my journey. And yeah, I hope it helps. Hope it's interesting. I hope this channel helps. Let me know. Uh, are there any things that you would like me to present on in this channel? All right. So thank you very much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.